What's going on, everybody? Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel and another EDU session. So here's a topic I've been sharing with the group for quite some time. I wanted to make a video for you guys. If you are playing options and you are not doing this, I promise you it is going to help you. We have a beautiful example of that today, and I'm going to break everything down for you and show you why it's important and how price will react differently. Okay, so let's get right into my screen. First off, I know that most of the time when I make videos, I'm just showing one screen, okay, for you guys on, on my regular videos. However, this is one of my most active screens. I have, you know, a few other screens. One of them shows, you know, six to uh, eight different charts. I have, you know, Discord up on another one, a, a scanner up on the other one. Since small caps are really not running as heavily as they were in 2020 and 2021. Obviously, I, I play a lot of large caps and options and, you know, the scanner it hasn't been as, a, as useful as uh, it was during the small cap era. But that's another story. So this is generally my main screen, okay? And so today we were playing SPY. The market's still open. It's Tuesday, November 1st. So you can go back and take a look at this. We had a big pull to the downside, uh, a little bit of a retrieval, one of my levels. Uh, as many of you guys know, I've talked about the 21 EMA. This is a beautiful setup. You could do this on the five minute or the three minute. We almost got that perfect setup. But like I said, it was kind of, you know, bear flagging into that EMA, Show, showed even a little bit of a, you know, resistance prices couldn't really rise up. It's one of my most, you know, my, my, my prize setups. I talk about this all the time. And that was what the first uh, EDU session was about. And we saw this happening. So I was looking to uh, add to another put position as this broke under the 200. And I chose to get out of it once we hit that 385. Saw some wicks here. Once the price was a little bit choppy, there wasn't strength. I wanted to look into another position. And I was looking at 381 puts, okay? So right here, I'll have two charts up. And then I'll actually have two options contracts. It's exactly what this video is about charting your option contracts okay so i'm going to break into detail as of why that's because you know due to you know expiration changing theta delta and numerous other factors okay iv and, and such premiums will move differently when it comes to price all right and so today i was looking i got into uh, I got into 384 puts for tomorrow on the downside. I was looking to make another entry. All right, I really want that, you know, that that uh, that delta gain to to ramp up throughout my position. So I was looking at 381 puts. Okay, so over here, and I'll kind of just zoom this down just a little bit more for you guys, so I can give you a little bit better of a look. But over here, you can see this is the 381 put contract. Now, if you're using Webull, uh, another charting software, even TradingView. I, I use TradingView. I, like I said, I chart this on Thinkorswim. You don't even think have to have an account with uh, TD Ameritrade. You can download their app and it will give you these option contracts. So up here, I have the SPY November 2nd, 381 put contracts. I'm looking at this on the three minute chart, which is exactly what I'm trading on a regular chart. Okay. So if I zoom out just a little bit, okay, I'm looking at to get a position right here. All right, as we were kind of bear flagging up towards that EMA, I saw price was very weak. I wanted the price action to continue to the downside. Now, as I zoom out, I'm always looking for where is my best entry, okay? Now, I enter into my contracts in, 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 in one third increments. The reason being is, you know, why I scale in is in order to try to get, a, you know, the best entry, average entry possible because you're not always gonna get a good entry. Option contracts can move very, very quickly. I'll make an entire another EDU session on that for you guys. But I was looking at, like I said, the 381 puts. And as you can see, the 381 puts charted over here. I saw this level of support. And we're looking at the same time frame, 1033, which is where I'm looking to get in here, which is around that 1030, one hour after market open. And I can see that this acted as a very strong support going all the way back to 1151 the previous day and about 245 the previous day. So I know that, listen, I'm going to want to get as close as I can to about this 145 level. I ended up taking my first ad at 158, my second ad at 155, and then I wasn't able to fulfill my third ad because the price started moving right from there. So as you can see in the options contract, we have strong support at this solid level. Now here's why we chart option contracts. Let's go all the way back over to this point right here, about 1145 to 1150 the day prior, which is November 1st. When you look at where SPY was trading, we we're all the way up here and you can see this time all the way up here at about, let's just say 388 to 388.20. Now, if you go over here and you look at the support again, which is the same price for the options premium contract, okay, around that 145 area, we're going to, let's say 240 to 250. 
Go over here, let's look at 240, 250. We're trading at 387.50 to 387.60. Price is lower, premium, premium uh, contract price and value is the same. Now let's go to today where we are at about 10.30. At about 10.30, we were all the way at 386.50. So you have three different prices, okay, for, for the SPY price. However, it is same when it comes to the premium contract. That is mainly due to, really because I would say theta in this case, just because, you know, it expires tomorrow. Uh, as, as the further you go out, this will play, you know, this effect for the theta will be a little bit lower. But if you're playing anything within that, you know, one day to even five day range, you're going to be able to look at this chart and it's going to help you get much better entries. It's also going to be able to show you where your risk is because, you know, premiums have ranges. OK, now this is just one example that I'm showing you guys. If you start to do this, even if you're not really following it, you can go back and look at other charts and take a look at these premium charts first is where price action has moved and chart it out a little bit. OK, and then you can jump over to SPY, QQQ you know, NVIDIA, Apple, whatever you're trading options on, as long as it's liquid, it's got to be, you know, a, a liquid ticker. And you can do this for yourself and see where, listen, I, you know, I can see exactly where I want my entries to be, where the support would be, where the break would be. Because if you're looking at this chart and, and you look up a little bit higher, you might think, you know, your risk was that 387 area, you know, maybe even a little bit higher. But looking at this premiums chart, you can clearly see besides for the opening in the morning. And once that old, you know, that right here, this, you know, which, which once was old support, you know, try to become new resistance. It breaks through. Now it becomes support again. We talk about this in the channel all the time. You would have known, listen, this is where I want my entry to be somewhere close to this range. Okay. Like I said, it's not going to be perfect, especially because, you know, options premiums, you know, can move very quickly, especially when they're one day expiration, but this is where I want to be able to get in into it. All right. Now I always scale in, like I just mentioned earlier, this is where well, you know, somewhere near my risk is. And then my stop loss, obviously I use the 21 EMA. It would have been a, you know, a nice solid close above that EMA signaling a reversal or potential, at least a move back up to the 200. All right. But at least, you know, okay, this is a little bit where my risk is and it helps you manage the trades a little bit differently. So if you are not charting options contracts, I highly suggest you even just look into it, practice it a little bit. Okay. See if it's something that can help you with your strategy whether it is, you know, support resistance, like I use it, or just, you know, also using it to be able to manage your risk or try to get the best entry possible. So guys, leave a comment down below. If you want me to do any other, you know, you have any other questions, I'd be more than happy to help you out and leave a comment down below. If you have questions specifically about charting options contracts, I'd love to help you out. So that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.